So uh, let's start really from the beginning. I, I'm running for governor of the state of New Jersey. And, and the first question you should ask anyone who's running for office is, why are you running? And that's often a very difficult question for a lot of candidates. You'll hear, well, I want to give back to the community. That's probably one of the most common statements, which was kind of vague. Give back what, if you look at what politicians do for us. Um, and, but, but it's taken me quite some time to really distill that down through my experience and disappointments and challenges as a mayor, as an elected official, as a mayor, as a business owner, um, as a family man, in dealing with government and dealing with policies. So I've reduced it to a simple statement. I'm running to be governor of the state of New Jersey to relieve every taxpayer of the burden of big government and its high taxes so that each and every one of us can rise to our best possible potential. Now, that is actually the foundation of the American dream. That's exactly what America was built on. The right to rise to your best possible potential, free of the shackles of big government, so that each and every one of us can rise to their best possible potential, and in doing so, elevate everyone around them. When an individual achieves great success, they inevitably will elevate everyone around them, whether it's through inventing a light bulb, or Microsoft Office, or perhaps starting a, uh, a business and creating jobs, or being a successful family person and volunteer in your community. Success breeds prosperity. That's what America is about. And so many millions of people came here from around the world to seek that opportunity to be free of the shackles of big government, of tyranny, of dictatorship, of kings and queens and of rulers in order to achieve their best potential. It's capitalism at the core of all this. It's free markets, it's individuality, it's everything, by the way, that in today's current political environment is under all out attack. We're seeing it now, coming out of the Barack Obama administration and some of those who are now pushing for expanded big government, expanded entitlement programs, expanded regulations, expanded infringement on individual freedom, um, all of these things that converge upon the ability of the individual to rise to their best possible potential. Um, and that has actually taken quite some time for me to fully digest its real implications, and perhaps even for those sitting here today listening to what I'm talking about. But if you go back to, you know, the foundation of our nation, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, amongst them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those opening words for a declaration of independence were considered by many to be the most important words ever written in the English language. Because with them, they launched the freest, most prosperous nation the world has ever seen. But uh, they also did something else quite profound. They shook the thrones of those European rulers and kings and queens to their very foundation. Because for the first time in the history of mankind, what the founders of this nation said, what Thomas Jefferson wrote, was that each and every one of you sitting here today is endowed with certain unalienable rights, and endowed with those rights by a power greater than any on earth, by God. And when you make that statement, that it's each individual is endowed by a creator more powerful than any on earth, you're saying that no power on earth can take those rights away. That immediately rendered those kings, those queens, and those rulers to obsolescence. You see, up until that point in history, they believed that they had those rights. When you see a picture of a king holding up his emperor, or that Asian emperor holding those, that orb, that was a symbol of their connection to heaven. They believed they had our rights, and they would decide what rights we would be given. They would divvy out the right to be married, how we would be taxed, whether or not we could own property free of the will of government, free of the abuse of eminent domain. Um, no, but when you say no, you, you don't have those rights. We, the people, have those rights. And we, the people, lend the right to govern to those who govern us. And it is incumbent upon us as citizens, when those who we endow the right to govern us become reckless and irresponsible, to do what we have to do and that is to take back control of that government. And you know, when the founders first proclaimed this great vision, these people around the world, they said, wait, this is impossible. Who are these Americans to think that they have the ability to govern themselves? They need a king or a queen or a ruler to rule over them. They can't possibly make their own decisions without someone to tell them what to do or how to do it, to be left to their own devices. They called it the great American experiment. And uh, 
Well, the experiment did work. And more freedom and more prosperity rolled across this nation from sea to shining sea like a thunderstorm across a prairie, delivering more freedom to more people than the world has ever seen. And that is uh, what America is about. And that, in my mind, is what, in governing, we should always put at the very forefront of our commitment. They get in the way of the dreams of the bureaucrats in Trenton, who think they can do a better job governing us from their white ivory towers than we can at home. They get in the way of things like eminent domain abuse by putting ballot questions on the ballot. Those local elected officials get in the way of government mandated housing pro projects. They get in the way of the state borrowing without voter approval and mortgaging our children's future. That's the real reason that the Trenton bureaucracy wants to eliminate local government in small towns because it takes away the right of us as individuals to govern ourselves the way the founding fathers envisioned it. And that's something we should never forget because as we give up that liberty and that power to centralize control, we're giving up our own individual freedom. And uh, that's something we should never relinquish, not for whatever dollar sign they may attach to it. That's the theme of my book. Um, that's the theme of my campaign for governor. That is uh, from which I've derived my commitment and my reason for running. And you know, in conclusion, I, I gotta, I'll say this, you know, that great document, the United States Constitution, was not a simply a spontaneous new thought. It wasn't just a bunch of guys who got together 235 years who had a great new idea. That was derived from a couple of thousand years of learning and suffering from Aristotle's, from Plato's Republic, down even through the, the New and the Old Testament, through John Locke, through the Magna Carta, all emerging at the end of a couple thousand years of human experience to create that great vision and that great talk. And ultimately, anyone running for office should be running because they're committed to preserving that vision and what we call the American dream. And um, that's what my book's about. It might be parochial, it might be on the local level. Certainly, it's what America is about.